A little update on the Regina maintenance-free chain. I've got the chain on here now for just over 12,000 kilometers. I just finished the ACT Italy, a uh, bunch of off-road and on-road tracks, and now I'm away to Rome. And I'm on the gas stop, and I've looked at the chain tension, and it definitely lost a lot of tension. It definitely needs retensioning. Definitely needs retensioning on the strip because I still have another week to go. So the promise that the chain does not need any retensioning, that's definitely a false. That doesn't work. I'll show you what it looks like. So this is my current chain and you can you can definitely tell, you don't, you don't need to see the, uh, the actual description, but this is definitely too loose. Let's talk about my dying Regina maintenance-free chain. What's up my bike friends? Welcome back to another video. This is a long overdue video on the Regina high performance endurance chain, which is their maintenance free chain. The BMW counterpart would be the BMW endurance chain. It came out a few years ago and uh, I was probably one of the first ones to buy a chain for a KTM. For those people that bought BMWs, you have the option to get one right from the factory. And the promise was nothing less than promising that there would be no maintenance necessary no lubrication no retensioning of the chain with the same duration as a normal chain so that for me is somewhere in the range of let's say 25,000 kilometers plus or minus usually plus maybe 30,000 that's what i got out of my last chain with the boiler so that's what i was expecting now the promise is big and when i first got the chain I made sure I took all the lubrication off of the chain. I didn't want any grease or lubrication on the chain. And probably for the first 1200 kilometers, I made sure even during service that no lubrication could get onto the chain. I just wanted to run it dry and see how long it would last. But then uh, I had it sitting there over winter because I didn't get nearly the miles and as I wanted last year because of my accident on the mountain bike. And I noticed that there was a little bit of sort of superficial rust on the chain. So I started putting a little bit of um, lubrication on it just to protect uh, the surface and it's made it wow check this out wow what a view and we've been riding in this area for a while but this is the uh, first time we're getting this kind of a view absolutely breathtaking we're still in the scottish highlands at the moment and this is the very last bit of a two-week tour and so the last couple hours in the this kind of a scenery. Wow, amazing. Then I got to soak this in for a little bit. So back <laughs> back to the chain. So I put a little bit of uh, lubrication on it just to make sure that the, uh, the surface doesn't get any rust on it. And uh, by that time, the first reports surfaced on the performance of the chain that they were not very promising having sort of chains that would last past the 25,000 kilometer mark. Uh, there was one guy, I forgot the name, I think Revzilla posted a, a report on that. I think he got 25,000 kilometers out of it. And then the chain died and didn't do any maintenance, any retentioning. And it, that's how long the chain lasts. 25 would have been fine to be in my book. Um, I mean, the chain didn't look very nice when he had to replace it, but that would have been fine. Now, my chain is at just over 20,000 kilometers, uh, the exact 20, 21,500 at the moment. And I'm still riding it because I can't change it out, but it's kind of dying at the moment. It's, it's almost last breath. So this is as far as I got with my chain. Now, after the 12,000 kilometer mark, I did do some lubrication. So every time I would wash the chain, I would put a little bit of lubrication on it just to protect it from rust. But also at the same time, uh, Regina updated uh, the maintenance manual to say, OK, do some, some retentioning do some lubrication especially when the chain is wet after rain ride or if you uh, clean it and so i had to lubricate the chain after that because it was also starting to show some premature wear i would say you'd see that typical red rust of death <laughs> showing through and that was especially apparent after we had to clean and wash down the bikes. We had a beach here where we could take the vehicles onto the beach. So we took the motorcycle onto the beach. Just an absolutely amazing ride uh, along the beach through the salt water. And of course, you have to make sure that the salt doesn't stick on your bike. So we had to wash the bikes down. Then, of course, there was no lubrication on the chain. 
And that's when it started to look really bad. That was at the beginning of the trip in Ireland. And I know that time had come for the <laughs> for the chain to, uh, to be on his last breath. So I was looking uh, desperately to get some chain loop. Uh, eventually, a few days later, I got some chain loop. So I started looping the chain just to make sure that I get through the trip all right. But now you can definitely tell that the chain you know, past the 20,000 kilometer mark is um, it's coming to an end. I mean, the, the links are hard to move. Um, you see there was a lot of slack in the chain, which I took out yesterday. Um, so I had to retension it quite a bit. And you see a lot of rust in there. So it's pretty obvious that the chain is, uh, is done and it won't be good enough for my upcoming Norway trip where uh, I have to change the chain. So at this point, with this mileage, it is hard to recommend the chain to at least what it was promised, that it's maintenance free and it needs no retensioning, even with the updated sort of uh, manual that uh, Regina put out to say, okay, you have to check the tension every 3000 uh, kilometers and you have to re -lube it once a year or every time it rains. Even that, I think, is not enough um, to run the chain. Uh, no, past that 20,000, 25,000 kilometer bar. So I can't really wholeheartedly recommend it. With all that said though, I bought it again. <laughs> I just bought it again. And what I'm gonna try is to start lubing it with dry lube. I just don't wanna have that mess of uh, grease and oils, you know, spraying into the rear wheel and all that gunk that build up with the uh, chain oiler, especially in the front sprocket. I wanna avoid that. So I'm gonna try dry lube and the maintenance-free chain, and I will lube it more frequently than what Regina's saying, but I won't do it every 500 kilometers. So for a trip like this, where I'm traveling 6,000 kilometers, maybe I have to re-lube it uh, a couple of times, maybe three times, but you know, it did work to a degree. So the whole coating, the um, sort of diamond-like coating, it did work uh, initially, but I think that's not the only place where a chain wears. I think uh, between the roller and the pins, that part is probably fine, but the uh, X-rings that I know, the rubber seals that seal the uh, permanent greasing um, of the pins in there. I think if there's no lubrication at all, and there's just rubber and all that friction and the heat coming out, I mean, chances are that rubber is going to wear down, and then either water is going to creep in or the the permanent grease is going to come out. And so that's probably where that chain starts to die then. Now, before I close out the video, the question you may have is why don't you just put a chain oiler on it again? And actually, I uh, I contemplated that again. To, um, I had a good experience with the chain oiler. There's, um, there's nothing wrong with using a chain oiler. It works really, really well. It's just another piece of equipment that you have on your bike. And they're not that difficult to install, but depending on what you buy, uh, it's also a bit of an investment, of course. So I just wanted to see if there's another way. And of course, one of the things that I said in the first video is for off-road riding, you still have all that grease on there and that attracts a certain amount of dirt. So that's something that maybe with dry loop and the maintenance-free maintenance -free chain, maybe this, the chain stays clean and dry enough. Also, when you ride through sand, that's a bit of a hope. That's why I'm still trying to see if that chain still works with less maintenance. Anyway, guys, if you found this helpful, uh, give me a thumbs up. If you have comments, leave them in the comments section. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next video. Until then, ride safe. Stay awesome.